Hey up YouTube, it's Theme Park Bazza here. And Mrs. Bazza. Oh, yeah, and Mrs. Bazza, who is there in the back room. Welcome to um, a home vlog. We haven't done one of these for a while. A couple of reasons, and I'll explain. In, in today's home vlog, going to just do a little bit of a DIY to start with, and then I'll go into what the title of this vlog is, which is around our um, cost of living here. So I haven't done a home vlog maybe for six months. A couple of reasons for that, been busy doing a lot of different things but also as you'll I'll put a link up here to the home vlog series we um, spent all our money as you know if you followed that series you know we did a lot when we first moved in here and we kind of blew the budget so just like we said in then in, in the vlogs we um, don't tend to spend money we don't have so for the last nine months we've really been saving up and recouping our money as I say we don't uh, as I mentioned we're lucky enough that we don't have a mortgage on this house we paid it off so we've been putting that mortgage money away every month and so we can start again this year because we've got a lot of things to do we have to uh, kitchens and bathrooms and we have to basically replace all this flooring because as you know that was a disaster uh, only good news is that in that nine months we've been here well we've actually been in the house 12 months um, house prices have gone crazy over here so it's gone up this the value of this house is probably going up by I think now uh, $80,000 so whatever we put into the house, um, yeah, we eat into our profits of the house, but we're not going to go into the red. So we're going to start spending again this year as the as that goes through. But a couple of other things. Um, first of all, I, I have a we're here in the um, in as you know what we call the Greek room because of our Greek pillars, and we have never had a light in here. In all the time we've been here, in a year, we've never had a light in here. We put one over here on the dining table. Um, almost a year ago so let me come around this side so you can see it without the light spoiling it for you so this is what we got in the dining room and maxin has been looking for something that was a similar style to go here in the Greek room and so here we have what Maxine got last week and we'll put that up today which is this it's a similar sort of style it's a similar sort of frame two bulbs and then I also ordered some more of these, uh, of course, you know, you, they're all LED bulbs now, but they match the ones that are across there. So we'll tackle that first. We'll get, uh, we'll get the light put up here and then we'll go into the um, finances. We've been in the house a year. We've been looking back at all our expenses for a year. So let's give you a real true cost of what it costs to live for us in this house, in our circumstances what it costs us to live here for a year so it helps you if you're planning to move to Orlando understand some of the costs and what you've got a budget for but let's get started on the light first now when you first come into a US house you'll notice there's lots of light switches everywhere and typically you're going to get these kind of sets of three light switches in many rooms I'll explain what they are and why they're in sets of three but the rule is whenever you come into an American house the first switch nearest the door should always be the one that turns the light on as you're first coming into a room so here we got like four switches as we come into our um, through our front door but as you hit the first one it turns on the light here which is next to the front door so just remember in every room you go into in an American house and there's like hundreds of switches the one first nearest to the door you enter will be the one that turns on the light and the next one here actually turns on the outside light so this is the one for turning on the uh, this is the one for turning on the lights outside but that that's the top trick so if that goes to plan here in the uh, Greek room, that should be the light, the switch that turns on the um, main light. The reason they come in three is that's usually the light. The second one is usually the fan, because most of the places here in the US have fans. And the third one is usually a socket that's in the wall down here that turns on a stand light like that in the corner. So if you've ever been on holiday here, you've been in an American house and wondered why one of the sockets doesn't work, it's usually because it's switched off at the wall. Now again, it's not both. In this case, it is the top socket. There's only one of a pair normally that are switched. So in this case, it's the top socket. So always remember, if you come in an American house and you wonder, first one is the, is the light in the room, second one is the fan, and third one should be like a socket that's near the bed or in the living room that turns on a stand light if you don't have a light above. Because in a lot of cases as well, remember sometimes they don't have, or didn't used to have lights in the fan, it was a pure fan. So you would have to have a separate light somewhere. But anyway, you got the options. If you don't have a light in the fan, they sometimes mess these up. And I'm gonna take the cover off here and see where they go. 
because when I look up at the light fitting up here, so I don't know if you can see up there, we have a white wire, a black wire, and a red wire. So in American houses, black and white is usually the main wiring. There'll be an earth, and the red wire, in this case, should be the switch wire. So in this case, the switch wire is the one that would, should come to the middle one, should be the switch for the fan. Sometimes the yellow, sometimes the red, but usually they are completely, so they're not black or white, that's a normal thing. So let's take the cover off here and see if the middle switch is a red one. Because what we're gonna do is that we won't, we'll just leave that one taped up and leave that um, alone in case at some point in the future we're gonna actually put a fan in here or somebody else's in the future so you don't ruin it for everyone. So the only, the only switches that are really gonna work here will be the one for the main light, the one for that socket and the middle one will just be, uh, won't do anything, we'll leave it taped up. But let's check the cover off and have a look. These covers should just pop off here, if I remember I put them on. Just to grab them at the bottom. And then just come off. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six screws I need to take out here to pull that retaining cover off. And then there's the three switches are held on by the uh, six screws. There we go. Uh, just take this first one out, see if I can see the wire collar that is going up to the, now these sometimes these screws are self retaining, you don't know until you unscrew it, that's going to stay in there so that's the tied into the switch itself. Out. I should just be able to wiggle this thing out. I haven't isolated it yet, I know you should do, but uh, I'm hopefully not going to touch anything that's going to go bang. So what I see on here is a red wire coming out the top of this switch. So it looks like they use the red wire as the switch wire up here. So let's, um, let's go up there, let's put the meter on it and then let's just flick that switch and just check that is the one that's going to give me the, uh, the uh, power to the light because I want the light switch, the one that works this light to be the first one as you hit, as you come into the room. So you never know until you get up there and have a look. So we'll get the steps out and we'll have a see. Going to go put some shoes on. You know, uh, my problem's going up ladders without shoes on. Yes, we got the uh, red and the black and the white and the earth just there at the back. So what I'm going to do is take the cover off the red one and then just check it with the meter here that um, that's the one that's switched from the, uh, from the light switch down there. I'm just going to check what I got between the white and the black. Oh, these cable, these things are all twisted up. So we have volts AC. If they were using the black and white before. So let me try the middle switch. Let me try the middle switch and see if it works on those two, which they may have done. Let's try the switch and turn it on. Turn it off, for example. 
connect on that on and just see if we now get 110 volts between this and the uh, and the white and black. Right, so what I discovered is um, they had wired these completely the wrong way around. So you can see as I just pulled the second switch off, and that's got red wires as well. So yeah, they're uh, they're all over the place around this house. You see the common at the bottom that links them to, to the black that goes across the bottom to link them to the hot wire, and then you've got the reds going out to do the switch wires. So we will um, switch these two over so that this one is right at the as you come in the door to turn on the light, and then this one is a light, but that will be the second light that really should go at this end because your fan is usually your middle one. But as I'm not using the fan in this case, I'll have this one as the main light in the room, that one as the second light in the room. So I just swap these two over. I have turned the power off by the way, I did go and set the power, so I'm just going to swap these two reds over, this one and this one, and then put it all back together because the black wires, the common rail below kind of denotes I can't swap the whole switch over because it's too short is that connection to the next one. So I just swap the reds over, we'll be good to go. Go to the power, I'm going to do one more check that when I flick this one, it turns on the power up top. Okay, just put it all back on now and checked it and so the red wire coming from here will be the switch wire that goes up there and then white is um, the return. Hot wire is the black one normally so I said I'm going to take up the black one, use the red because the black one's right at this end of the box and I don't want to switch all these over. I want the main light to be the first switch as it should be. Uh, and we'll put that on electricity's back, electricity's back on for this test. I'm going to turn it off again. I know electricity's on because I think Google's working. Okay Google. Am I sexy? Sorry, I don't understand. Okay, Google. Do you love me? Of course. What would I do without you? That's why I like Google. So basically in the kit that comes with it, you get um, the, the plate that's going to hang down and you get a little mounting bracket inside that we need to put up there. You get the bar that this is going to uh, hang down from for the lights you get and you also get the I know you know I don't like these but you get these little twist on things let me put my uh, hand behind that so you can see it you get these little twist on things that you screw onto the wires not a fan but they're big here in America so we will uh, leave uh, the black wire with one of these on and taped up and then we will tape the wires that come with the light to the red and the white and then there's just a couple of screws in there as well for screwing it all together so we shall get on putting all that up working fine. Uh, we've got a few bits left over that we'll save, but I think it looks okay. It looks very similar to the, that one. Other top tip as well is, before we get into the finances side of things, when you're putting these back on, leave them a little bit loose, because once you put this plastic frame on, you can adjust them to get them square, because you're trying to get all three lined up. So if you leave them a little bit loose, get the plastic cover on first and then tweak them up afterwards, it makes it a lot easier when you're putting these gangs of three together. So um, job done. So I will finish this off and then we'll have a chat about finances. Oh, take a rest out under this wonderful light that is now above us. So the reason a lot of you are tuning in, of course, is to uh, find out about the cost of living. What does it cost to live here in Florida? So I work with a financial planner and I take all the data from the last year 
and I put it into this uh, spreadsheet that I'll pop up here on the screen next to me and we'll go through it together. But remember, these are kind of our circumstances and these are based on me projecting what I think some of the costs will be, ongoing costs. Because what I want to get to is how much money do you need to bring home every year to live here in Florida after taxes. So these numbers on here are what I think you're going to need to spend for us anyway and what on our lifestyle. And again, as it is today, you can adjust your lifestyle as you go to accommodate. There's nothing to say you can't. But And I basically went for a worst case scenario. So I put in all the numbers that you know rounded up or putting higher numbers than maybe I, I think I might need. Uh, a little bit, a few percent, because I want to know what is the top level that um, you need and then you've got some buffer to cut things out if you need to. But I'll walk through this spreadsheet with you. And here as you see it pop up on the screen, and I'll make it as big as possible. Um, on the left you have all the categories, and on the right these three columns are really weekly, monthly, annually. I just went annually, just to get a, a big number. So you start to see as you go down, and these numbers are based on actual numbers um, from our experience of living here from a year. So we start with electric, electricity, gas and water rates and they're from um, what we paid. That's for two of us living in a 2,800 square foot house in Orange County. Um, you can see the rates. The property tax was based on the, um, was based on the uh, area we live in. It differs in Orlando. You don't know until you get it. Um, home telephone. I guess I should have put something in there. For, I think mobiles are down further on actually. Repairs and renewals, I put in like 15% of the value of the house every year. You might not need 15%, but usually if you work between um, 5 and 10, but I know we've got to have a new roof on this, and I know the AC only lasts 10 years, and I know there's other stuff going to be need to be done. So this is separate to any renovations. The budget I was talking about for the renovations are totally outside of this. We put them in a separate savings account, um, and we're going to apply those to the house. This is just like the annual ongoing living costs. So you can see we don't have any solid fuel or oil. We have a gardener's here that you have to pay for. That's one thing I could cut the costs of in the future. I might do the gardening. Um, what was currently charged, insurance here is a lot higher, house sure insurance, because you've got to take um, protection out against hurricanes and you have to take protection out, well, you don't have to, but you're wise to take protection out against sinkholes. So typically it's $1,000 a year more than it was in Virginia for us here. So bear in mind house insurance is a big deal. TV and internet subscriptions, so that's for all your apps um, that you might have and the internet. Um, some, people, some people don't have one. Any other expenses or some um, miscellaneous things, some miscellaneous things actually, even I put in there. Oh, internet's further down actually, internet's further down. A housekeeping and food, for me and Max, that's for eating in the house. What we estimate we spend every month. Of course, there's, um, inf this doesn't include inflation because if, like you, if prices are going up like crazy, there may be a 5% increase every year on top of this, but that's getting a bit complicated. Then you can see um, wine, spirits, pet foods, we don't have pets, holiday home, we don't have um, other expenses. So again, get one of these forms online if you want to do it yourself and fill them out to get some idea of what you're currently paying in England and compare it to the US, and this is in dollars. So basically you see there's nearly $25,000 there. We don't have any education expenses or kids in the house anymore, so we do need to fill that section in. And then clothing and footwear. Um, we might buy odds and you know things every now and again. We put some money in for eating out, um, and that you know might, might seem a lot in a year. We're eating out twice a week here, but remember, it prices are a lot more expensive because you're in Disney, so you have to factor that in. Um, subscriptions. I can't remember what that is for. Mobile phones. Um, other miscellaneous spending money that was like for vacations or holidays uh, to go back to England. So, you know, we kind of um, put all that lot in and that came out to 19,000. And then the big thing about our house here, you have to factor in is we don't pay a mortgage. Like I say, we were lucky enough after owning houses for 30 years to be able to buy this one for cash. So um, we don't own that, but we were paying around $2,000 a month in, um, payments for mortgage or rent so uh, we don't know where rent's going to be when you get here but we don't factor any of that into this because it's not a cost for us so our costs oh by the way down the bottom here sorry there's like um cars car tax petrol and gas uh, servicing and repairs um, 
all that kind of stuff that we put in there. And then at the bottom there is the um, insurance. So medical insurance is a big deal over here in the US. And so I'm putting like um, a year, I'm expecting to be have to put six grand into an account. When you get to 65 here, and I'm not there yet, even with the gray hairs, not by a long way, but um, over here, there is something called Medicare that kicks in when you're 65, that covers like 70% of your costs, but not everything. Then you've got your CPA fees, which is like for your accountants and all this kind of stuff. So if we get to the grand total there at the bottom, 54,420 is what I would need to bring as take home pay every year to be able to, um, to, be able to live with the current standard that we have today. Obviously, if you have a mortgage to pay as well, and that's $2,000, say, a month, you're going to have to add another $24,000 on top of that. So you're already up at, what were we at, um, 54, 64, 74, um, you're at $78,000. And at the current exchange rate, $78,000 would be equivalent to about um, 57,000, 57,600 UK pounds. If you don't have a mortgage and we put that in at the um, 54, you're then talking about $40,000. But the other thing you have to factor in over here is cost of living over here. And if we um, go to this Florida paycheck calculator, what I did was like look at um, for an hourly rate of $15 an hour, that's kind of minimum wage here. If you're working in the parks so or doing a part-time job, but assume it's full-time, assume it is, um, 80 hours a week, and the reason I'm saying 80 hour pay period is you get paid every two weeks here. So that's 40 hours a week, two weeks is 80 hours. At minimum wage, your take home, estimated take home pay is $992. Uh, so if you look at that chart there, you will see that um, basically 9.6% or say 10% of your money is gonna come out in taxes and the rest you would take home. And if you convert that into annual uh, salary that's around 25 grand so minimum wage you're making less as an individual you're making less than half you would need a lot less than especially if you need a mortgage than half you would need so if two of you in the house are working at minimum wage you would still struggle and that's a big struggle a lot of people move to Orlando and can't afford to live here because at minimum wage um, it's really tough you'll find anybody who's working in the parks any of the uh, cast members, especially the younger ones who are single, tend to get four, five, six of them together in a house and rent a house together. So they're all only paying like 500 bucks, 400 bucks a year, a month, should I say, in, um, in, in rent. And then that's the only way to afford it uh, and get your discounts on it as well. So, you know, if you, if you take on, and by the way, that was take on pay. And if you assume 10% of your taxes, that $54,000, at 10% on becomes $60,000 minimum and the 78 really becomes $85,000 because that's take home pay before taxes come out. That's what you need to live, just what you're going to spend cash. So it's very sobering, kind of makes you think, okay, you know, and again, these are our circumstances. This is what we would need, smaller house, but again, we don't have a mortgage, so it's probably going to cost more for others to live here. Um, so it's not cheap. It isn't cheap to live in Orlando and house prices are very expensive so a lot of people are renting. But I hope that helps you sort of appreciate the cost of living for moving here. Uh, it's the whole thing. I always remember when I was uh, a youth and I'd see all these really flash cars going around that I wanted to drive. And everybody driving them had grey hairs and I'm like, why, why is it only old people drive these really flash cars? It's like, cause could the only ones who could afford them and it's the same that you find it's an older generation moving here to Orlando because they're at that point in their careers maturity um, or not having a mortgage or whatever where they can actually afford to live here so it's really really tough you can do it but again this is why I say you need to plan when you're coming out here make sure you've got a job um, the good thing about Orlando is when you do have a salary here um, there's no income taxes those taxes are taken out like just the stealth taxes you know, in England, when you're paying like 15, 20, 30% income tax, Florida doesn't charge you an income tax on your salary because it's paid for by all the tourism, by all the tourists coming here. So that 10%, 9% is really just all the stealth taxes that you have to pay, you know, for your Medicare payments when you retire and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it is still there. 
So all that's useful for you, uh, maybe sobering for a few of you to understand uh, the actual costs, but that's based on reality. That's based on 2021 as a year and costs. And like I say, it helps me to plan around my retirement years away, but what do I need to you know from my savings? You've got to kind of look at your, your savings in retirement. Um, and even if you cut back on a number of these things, how much I'm going to be pulling from that every year and how long will they last? based on um, my pensions and your 401ks or your IRAs or whatever you've got, how long are they going to last um, to keep me going to pay for all this stuff. So yeah, um, adulting is hard and <laughs> it sucks sometimes, but use this data just as a point of reference. Hope it helps you. Thank you so much for watching the home, first home vlog we've done in quite a while. Hope it was interesting and you got something information out of it. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe. It does help the channel. Put your comments below on this, tell me what you think about this, um, have I missed something, is there something else you'd like to know, I'm willing to share a lot of this information with you, and um, well we, because Mrs. Theme Park Buzz is now going upstairs, we will see the latter, bye.